Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. And I am so excited for this one. As we close our Hispanic Heritage Month, we want to welcome Sammy from most known from the Netflix show, The Circle. Hi, Sammy. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How's how's life? How's everything? It's crazy. <laughs> it's hectic right now just with a baby, but life's good. Life's good. That's I'm not awesome. complaining. I love that. I'm honestly so excited to that we got you to be on um Community Voices. Definitely loved the show when it first came out. You were my favorite. I was obsessed when it first came out. And you were a lot of people's favorites, right? You were like the fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. But I was rooting for you, girl. Like be hooked on the circle. And I swear it's been like that ever since it came out, truly. Yeah, I love it. I love doing it. It was definitely a crazy experience for sure. Um, nothing I've ever experienced before in my life. Like I was literally locked in an apartment for two weeks. So that was interesting. But I am so blessed and so grateful for everything that has come from that like whole experience. And even though I was locked in the apartment, that part was hard. Like Netflix made sure that I was comfortable at all times and that I was safe. They had psych checking after me all the time, all of us, yeah. um, the whole entire time. And then even after we left for like a month, we were talking to a psych. And then even after the show came out, they were checking on us. Like it was a great production, like all the behind the scenes, everything about it was amazing. Oh, I love to hear that. And honestly, yeah. that does lead to my first question is like, you know, what even led to you like being involved in the first season of The Circle? You know, you were kind of like the pioneers for sure, because now it's this like well-known show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I had asked the same question because I didn't necessarily know how they found me either. But basically, one of the producers told me that one of the casting people told me that they go, they have this like, um, I guess like platform where they input a bunch of emails and they send out like mass emails. Um, and so when you have your email connected to your Instagram, that's how they got it. Like they, you know, grab a bunch of emails and then they just send out a mass email. So apparently I got one of the emails. It didn't say anything about like the circle or Netflix, none of that. And I guess I filled it out. I didn't know that I filled it out. And like four or five months later, I got a phone call from this casting director. Her name is Tiffany. We're actually like really, really good friends now. Um, but she had called me and I had gotten her like it was a voicemail. And she was like, hey, Sammy, just wanted you to know I received your application. Like, please give me a call back. I would love to talk to you. And I was like, I am not calling this bitch back. Like, what is this? I don't even know what this is. Like, I don't trust that. I lived in Miami at the time, too. Right. With a bunch of summers, So like I was like, hell yeah. no. I don't know what this is. I don't know what I put my phone number into, but I don't want any of it. So then one day I was leaving work and I had like a really stressful day and I was just like flustered and I got into my car and my phone was ringing and I didn't even look at it. I just answered. I was like, hello. And you know, nobody was calling me other than like my family members. So she was like, hi, Sammy, this is Tiffany. Um, you know, I've been, I left you a couple messages. Uh, to this day, she still jokes around and says that I was like the hardest person to, to get in touch with, but she was like, um, you filled out an application for a reality show. Like, I would love to like sit down and have a meeting with you. And I was like, all right, like, let's do it. And then the day of, I got like really excited for it yeah. and I got all dressed up and it was a Zoom call just like this. It was like two hours long. And at the end of it, it was her, it was Tiffany and um, Raphael, which is another guy that was uh, doing it with like another casting person. And um at the end, they were like, yeah, we're going to compress this into a one minute video and show producers. And I was like, one minute. I, I don't even know what I've done in the last two hours. Like, you guys better make me look good. Like, yeah. this, be good. this needs to be good. And then after that, I didn't hear from them for months. So to the point where I like forgot about it. And then they contacted me in July and they were like, hey, we're flying to L.A. We're flying you to L.A. I think it was July, like 15th through 19th or 14th through 19th or something like that. And I went and I met the um, producers of the show from the UK because it's a UK show. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. And so like they, they gave me a psych evaluation. I ran through all these questions, you know, all that. I left, I went back to Miami and then I didn't hear from them again for a month. And then August 7th, I got a phone call and we were on FaceTime 
August 8th, I found out that I was going to the UK to film the show. August 9th, I flew out to the UK Insane. for a month. Insane. Insane. Yeah. And then the rest is history, right? Because, like, yeah. the rest is just, like, yeah. yeah, one after the other. It was crazy. And, like, they put you in these apartments before going into the actual apartment. So I was in an apartment for, like, a week and like they take everything like the minute I landed in the UK in Manchester like there was a chaperone waiting for me she had a bag and she was like put everything in it I put my wallet in it my passport in it my phone in it everything that I had so I was literally not a person I get in this car and we're driving and then once we got closer she was like okay you need to put this on I had to put on headphones and I had to put on goggles over my eyes like that's how intense it was and I was like I could be killed right now and nobody would know because I was trusting I just got on a plane thinking that I trust these people. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, I had no idea you know, that it was that crazy. <laughs> that was that intense. Even when, like some scenes where you see like anybody, any of the contestants who went into like the gym or the yeah. yoga room or like I went up to the hot tub, uh, the hot tub on the roof. Like anytime we traveled out of our apartments, we had headphones, like noise canceling headphones on and goggles on and two people like on each arm, like guiding us. That's so that we couldn't hear or see anything, nothing. Oh my gosh. That's see that those are things that they don't tell you, right? See, because we're just thinking you guys are just disconnected from like everywhere. But yeah. it's really like you didn't have no idea. And especially with you guys being like the first round of the show, it's like what what to expect. So that's insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, but after, you know, after you appeared on the circle, you know, obviously things like blew up for you you know that was just like the start of it all um but you did go back to school right and you got your master's in applied behavioral analysis um so would you say that like your experiences on the show kind of made you want like to go back and finish that or was that just something that you just you know always planned on doing for yourself so I was already actually in my program I was a year and a half into my program and I during the month that I was in the UK filming for the show, I like, I was supposed to start my, um, my next semester. (laughs) I was supposed to start my next semester while I was there. And because the semester started on like August 22nd or 23rd, and I was coming home the week after. And so I, I literally had one of the like casting producers one of the casting producers, I was like, can I use your computer? You know, all of this stuff It ended up like my teacher was like, it's not going to work. Like you can't, you can't do it this way. So I was, so I couldn't, so I had to take off a semester. So I ended up taking off like three months and I missed that semester and I graduated in 2020. So the show came out January of 2020 and I graduated um, with my master's in December of 2020. Oh, how awesome. Okay, great. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so it had nothing to do with the circle at all. Yeah. Um, I had already, you know, been working. I was working as a behavior therapist in Miami um, for like two years at that point and wanted to get my master's degree. And so, yeah, it just ended up that I had gone on the show. Yeah, that's super dope. So everything just kind of like aligned perfectly then. Like, right, start of 2020, right? Like you're picking up and then like the world just shuts down. (laughs) Crazy. And the show out literally right when I got back I got to enjoy it for like two months because when we would go out in Miami like everyone Miami shows me the most love even to this day like whenever I go there everyone shows me the most love there and I got to enjoy it for like two months and then the world shut down so like I didn't really get to like party I didn't get to go to the MTV award or I did but not like the real MTV awards and then I didn't get I got nominated for a people's choice award I didn't get to go to that because of COVID so it kind of stripped like that experience away from me but everything else I'm still so grateful for. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, you know, speaking of like you, you know, being a native of Miami, you know, I know that the uh, Hispanic culture there is like super present, super, you know, it's, it's so big over there. Everybody's um super prideful in their, in their Hispanic culture. So leading up to that, it's like, you know, what does Hispanic Heritage Month kind of mean to you in that, in that remark? So just kind of being around so much like Hispanic culture, being that you're from Miami. So I'm actually not from Miami. They had me say that I was from Miami on the show because one of the guys on the show is from Concha Hawken, which is like literally a borough over. And the the college that I went to to get my undergrad is the same town that he lived in. So they were like, we can't have two people from the same area, you know, in 
on the show. So they were like, just say from Miami. And at the time I lived in Miami and I feel like I gave off that, like I gave Miami at that time, you know, yeah. like, it was like wild partying. I had just stopped working at a strip club. Like I was like, you know, well, a nightclub, not a strip club, but, <laughs> um, you know, so whatever, but I moved there specifically for the culture because where I was raised, I was raised by my aunt, my uncle in a predominant Permanently white neighborhood I was like one of like four other girls that had curly hair in my school and I think there was only like me and maybe three or four other uh people I think there was one guy and two other girls that were Puerto Rican mm -hmm. and so I didn't really have much nobody in my family spoke Spanish here um all of my Puerto Rican side of my family everyone lives in Florida or they live in Puerto Rico so I didn't really have that you know, experience growing up and both of my parents are Puerto Rican. So I always was searching for that yeah. and like wanting to know more about it. And I always listened to Spanish music, even though I didn't understand a lick of it. I always understood. I always wanted to listen to Spanish music to the point my parents got um, two foreign exchange students, one from Mexico and one from Spain. And to this day, we're still really close. I still talk to them, but it was always so important for me because I felt like I was like missing a part of myself. And so living in Miami, like I consider that my home because I feel like I was able to experience my culture and experience like kind of what I missed out on, yeah. you know, my life. Yeah. And I really love it. But Hispanic Heritage Month to me is more so just like learning more about my myself and learning more about like where my family comes from and where my ancestry comes from and like who I am. My mom died when I was two years old, so I didn't get to experience her. And, you know, she was full Puerto Rican and I didn't get to experience, she spoke Spanish, you know, she looked Spanish. She, it was very much like everything that I would have loved to have growing up as a little girl. And now, um, and it's even more important for me to teach my son. Like I want my son to speak Spanish yeah. so bad. He's already been to Orlando. He's been to Miami. Like I brought him to Florida. Um, we're going to Puerto Rico. And I just, I want him to to have that experience and, and have that culture in his life. That's awesome. Honestly, that's, that's super important. And that was, you know, kind of leading into my next question is, you know, how would uh, you want to embrace that and bring that into you know your son's life and I think that that's like super big already you know booking trips and getting him to you know hear the language around him and things like that like getting them started early right because that's when they're like absorbing it all um but maybe you know because of that you know because you said that you know uh you didn't really see um other girls you know that had like curly hair or, like you know you were raised in a predominantly white neighborhood did you ever feel that maybe like you were treated differently because of like your heritage or you know people didn't really like realize that you know you were um Puerto Rican and things like that yeah absolutely like I everyone always just thought I was white and you know I am <laughs> I get tan in the summer times like my best friend is Irish German and I would go on vacation with her and her family and her family would always like laugh and be like don't get it you can't stay in the sun anymore like people are going to start asking questions why we got you with us because I, I get really dark in the summertime and um but no I don't think I was ever treated any differently because nobody ever really knew I was always told like oh we just thought you were Italian when like both my parents are Puerto Rican my dad is half Italian so like I do have Italian in me and my last name is my dad's I wish I had my mom's last name her last name was Mojica but um yeah I don't think I was ever treated differently I mean in school like girls would be like or people in general not just girls but girls and guys would always be like oh like what do you have in your hair how do you get it curly and like people will try and touch my hair but it was never like over the top or like bullying and um you know I was always very loud and like nobody ever tried me right right <laughs> no, 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 nobody ever tried me that far yeah <laughs> your hair's so curly and I'm like water yeah. <laughs> yeah she's like I just got it like that <laughs> um, no for sure and honestly you know being super honest just about uh you know having to look for you know that your like culture and like you know asking questions and you know you moving to Miami to like be more around it and learn you know a lot of people aren't really honest about that you know they're kind of just like I'm in touch with with my Hispanic side or I'm not you know so for you 
what what would you you know say to other viewers or people who you know maybe want to get in touch with that or who like you know they don't speak spanish or their families you know maybe don't share too much of of their hispanic roots to them but you know if they want to learn about it you know what are maybe some things or steps that you did besides from like moving right to like miami but maybe just like little things like culturally like music or things like that yeah so i always listen to spanish music um and i would look up like movies i, I was watching selena um and i was making sure that i was just like on my own time doing things that made me feel more connected and luckily my grandmother is still alive she's puerto rican born in puerto rico and so she still makes spanish food all the time like he just tried platanos for the first time over the weekend on sunday and i was like so excited about it and so she still like makes food and a couple weeks ago my family flew in from puerto rico or actually a couple months ago and we have like they they, they like made like all empanadas and all the Spanish food and we were so excited about it um but yeah if you can't move I understand that that's hard I have like just little things since moving back to Pennsylvania because I just moved back here in February I go on Yelp and I look up like Cuban restaurants or Spanish restaurants and they're mostly in the city which is like a 25 minute drive for me and I'll go and like you know, try different foods. I feel like there's so many little ways that you can do it on your own time. I mean, Duolingo, I had on my phone for a while, like trying yeah. to learn stuff. <laughs> I've ordered him. I have books like Good Night Puerto Rico and Cookie in the City and like reading things to him. So, I mean, there's so many ways and they were like $5 on Amazon. I feel like if you really want to learn about your culture, luckily now like we're in a time and age where you can easily look things up on social media or you can easily google something you can easily order something off of amazon um yeah that would be it and for anybody like wanting to 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 learn about the rights i feel like we have to start looking at who to vote for i feel like that's yeah. like the number one thing for sure um, to change things because i feel like luckily moving back here I've noticed that it's become a lot more diverse mm -hmm. and I love that so yeah that's it that's all I got <laughs> a little super a little good. no yeah but you know it, it's taking that first initiative to like want to do those things you know and like looking for those things especially since you are raising your son you know like having those little things you know as he's growing up so he can remember like hey you know like my mom is, you know, Puerto Rican, like our family is Puerto Rican. And, you know, I know about these dishes, or I can speak the language, or like, I know about these, like, little practices, you know, and things like that. So that's super important. And that's super awesome that you're doing that, you know, for yourself and for your family that you're creating, you know what I mean? Um, but I am happy to say that JD Sports will be donating $8,000 to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Um, so thanks to you. Um, so why did you pick that organization? My brother was diagnosed in 2018 or 2019, like literally maybe a year or so before COVID, um, diagnosed with Crohn's. And it was a really dark time for my parents and for my family. I lived in um, Miami at the time. And so I was kind of not in the loop at all. And until I, I had come home and you could see his bones, like he lost so much weight. And my brother is a very active, loves to be outdoors, loves to be like doing stuff. And he started just like playing video games a lot. And he was complaining a lot about back pain and stomach pain. Nobody knew what was wrong. He got tested so many times. Nobody could figure it out. Finally, they decided it was Crohn's. And it was just like an uphill battle from that point on. And the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation has done so much. Like they have organizations where they do walks and they do like meet and greets. And we were supposed to do one and then COVID happened. And, um, but we raised a lot of money. I've done cameo. I raised like $6,000 for the foundation. Um, so yeah, it's just like in support of my brother. And I'm really grateful now, now that we're in talks of him, hopefully stopping the medication that he's on. He's been on medication for so long, but he's kind of, you know, in remission. He doesn't really experience any of the symptoms of Crohn's anymore. Yeah. Um, but you know, we were really lucky to have something like the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation because we had no idea what Crohn's was and usually children aren't diagnosed with Crohn's that's like something you get diagnosed with in your like 
you know, 30, 40, yeah. 20, 30, 40, right? It's not like a child. I think, how old was he in 2018? 15, 11, 10. He was nine years old wow. when he got diagnosed, with, which is just like crazy to me. When I, when they told me that, I was like, I didn't even understand it. I didn't even, first of all, I didn't even know what Crohn's was. It wasn't talked about ever. Um, so yeah, it was really, really scary. And one of the girls in, I think it was season one, or I don't know if it was season one or season two of the circle in UK, she has Crohn's. And so it was like a really good to connect with her at the time and ask her questions. Um, but yeah, before I go on a rant, (laughs) that's why I chose that's why I chose that foundation. No, that's, that's why- great. You know, yeah, because you know, definitely really- that's something that viewers should know about. You know, the organization and obviously why it's um like it resonates with you so greatly. So thank you for sharing that. Honestly, I had no idea, and you know, I'm I'm hoping that you know everything is well with your brother and that you know hopefully like he the medications you know that he's taking that next step into um you know getting into you know like better health with that. But um you know for you like obviously, you know, you've shared your experiences and how you kind of plan on like bettering or um, furthering like your um, knowledge of Hispanic culture and, you know, with your family. But do you have like plans maybe to like just continue fighting for and supporting the Hispanic community with maybe like their right to equal health care, like education going forward? And, you know, maybe like how can other people support, you know, with you knowing what you know, um, based on like the work that you do? Yeah, Um. So that's like a difficult question for me. I will say like, I that's definitely something that I have to do more research on myself. But first and foremost, I feel like it always starts with who we vote for and we really have to pay attention to who we're voting for. And I love that in, in this day and age, there's more people of Hispanic heritage. There's more people of color being able to be in these spaces where they can fight and advocate for these things. So I feel like it starts with voting, not necessarily picking a side, but really finding out who is doing what and what they're standing for and how are they able to help? Because it's in those offices that change things. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, That's first and foremost. And then I just feel like finding, I guess more so finding organizations that do things almost like the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. I I, I personally think that I would want, I'm going to research and do things on like children, you know, what groups issues that they have to help the youth because I feel like that's also the next step too is like starting with our children and raising them and figuring out how we can get them in spaces to do certain things or in spaces that they necessarily wouldn't be in before you know yeah 100 percent. and you know with being a mom I, I know that that is like now a subject that definitely like hits a little bit differently you know what I mean um but honestly thank you so much Sammy for taking the time to like speak with me today you know it really does mean a lot to have you here for Hispanic Heritage Month and just kind of share like your story you know things that you've done for yourself things that you're doing for your family um because you know that culture and that representation is just so important you know and it's 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 really special when you've had like your grandparents or your parents you know have that culture and that you can pass that down to like your family that you're creating now so I truly you know wish you the very best with everything that you pursue and I hope you know to see you doing doing so much you got a fan here you know, like I said from when that show started you know in 2020 I, I was like bro Sammy's the best you know I wish you won Right. But that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother story. But, you know, um, you're definitely I've always knew it. You were like just super genuine and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Um, your baby boy is the cutest. And, you know, I just wanted to see you guys thriving um, and, you know, wish you the best, like I said, in everything that you that you do in this life, for sure. So much. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Well, it was so great talking to you. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye.